Hello everybody and welcome to this short video looking at the causes of primary hypertension. Now before you watch this video, it would be useful if you can look at the, the video on chronic hypertension to see the underlying biological mechanisms when regulating blood pressure over a longer period of time. Now in terms of primary hypertension, it's defined as hypertension which does not have a known cause. So there's no factor which can be teased out to determine why somebody has uh, the hypertension. Now there could be a genetic component to developing primary hypertension, but the most important cause is being overweight or obese. Okay, so when you have an increased amount of weight, then you will have several changes within the body which link intricately to an increase in blood pressure. Now, the first change that we have is an increase in cardiac output. Now, this makes sense because if you're carrying more mass, particularly fat mass, then the heart has to work harder to get blood flow to the tissues, to get blood flow to all of those extra adipocytes which are basically fat cells. So you get an increase in cardiac output, you also get an enlargement of various organs and tissues within the body, and again that increases the demand for blood flow uh, to, to those organs and tissues. And we know that if you have an increase in cardiac output, you get an increase in blood pressure. Okay, now the second change is the, an increase in sympathetic nervous system activity. Now, in general, sympathetic nervous system activity causes vasoconstriction. So you then get an increase in total peripheral resistance. Uh, and again, you have to have uh, a greater force of contraction by the left ventricle, so the heart is working harder. Now, it's also been suggested that symp the sympathetic nervous system activity uh, might be activated by various inflammatory cells that are released by the adipocytes, the fat cells. So these adipokines are proteins which can activate the sympathetic nervous system and cause this vasoconstrictor effect. And there's also evidence to suggest that leptin, which is a hormone, again released by the adipocytes, may actually impact upon sympathetic nervous system activity um, and increase vasoconstriction. Okay, so these are two effects uh, of primary hypertension in obese individuals. Now, one of, the other, one of the other things that occurs is you have an increased release of angiotensin 2 and aldosterone. So we know that angiotensin 2 is a potent vasoconstrictor, so it causes vasoconstriction, particularly of the, the renal microvessels and that impairs kidney function. Because the kidney function is impaired, you get an increase in extracellular volume because the kidney is not able to get rid of the excess water and salt. So you get high blood volume and then high blood pressure. So this is uh, the, as a result of angiotensin II, and we know that aldosterone actually causes the kidney to reabsorb water and salt from the renal tubular fluid. So again, both of these are increased two to threefold in obesity. So it's very important that these two hormones are actually increased uh, by quite a large amount in obese individuals. And they obviously drive um, an increase in blood volume. Okay, so we'll get an increase in blood volume because of impaired kidney function due to angiotensin II, and then you get increased salt and water uh, back into the extracellular fluid, and therefore an increase in blood volume and blood pressure. So these are some of the ways in which primary hypertension uh, and obesity link together, and how somebody carrying excess amount of fat will actually have these physiological changes which will predispose them to, to developing hypertension. Now, in terms of the treatment, the obvious answer really is to reduce weight. Now, how is that going to happen? Weight reduction is going to be a combination of increasing your physical activity levels, 
Okay, so increasing physical activity levels, and this is basically increasing your EE, your energy expenditure, and dietary restriction. So this does not mean not eating anything at all. This means eating foods which are nutritious for you, but that have a lower energy intake than you are expending. So they have a lower amount of uh, energy, so you're not consuming foods that are high in saturated fat. So the idea is to try to reduce the amount of uh, calories that you're taking in. So exercise helps to increase the energy expenditure. Your dietary restriction is reducing the kind of energy that you're putting into your body. And hopefully this will lead to a negative energy balance. So what do we mean by negative energy balance? Essentially what you're trying to do is expend more calories than you're actually consuming from your food. This will cause a, a, an energy deficit and that energy deficit will be met from the adipose tissue, the fat stored within your body and you'll start to re reduce weight. And if this is done correctly, then it can be done over a, a long period of, longer period of time so that you can maintain, or sorry, you can get a gradual reduction in your weight and you're more likely to then maintain that new lower weight. So this is one way in which you reduce the amount of weight and therefore that will have a positive effect on blood pressure because you'll have a reduction in cardiac output, you'll have a reduction in fat cells which release those harmful chemicals which cause an increase in sympathetic nervous system activity. Um, but also of course another treatment for primary hypertension is various drugs that can be given to, uh, to patients when they present with uh, uh, clinically significant hypertension. So in, uh, rather than talk about specific drugs, if we just look at kind of general drugs, we've got vasodilator drugs. And, and these drugs actually have multitude of effects within the body, but if we look specifically about um, uh, uh, one of the main controllers of hypertension is the activity of the renal system, well what vasodilator drugs do is they cause relaxation of renal microvessels. So the tiny little blood vessels in the renal circulation and this improves the excretion of fluid from uh, water and salt from the kidneys and you get a reduction in blood volume and a reduction in blood vessels, uh, sorry, a reduction in blood pressure. Um, so, so what I'm trying to say here is that vasodilator drugs have, a relax have an effect of relaxing the renal microvessels. They will also cause increased vasodilation of the systemic circulation as well. And obviously that makes it easier for the heart to pump blood around the body as well, so you get um, a more efficient pumping of the blood to the rest of the body. Uh, so you get vasodilation of the systemic circulation and that obviously reduces the total peripheral resistance uh, and it makes it easier on uh, the, the, the left ventricle. So you've got vasodilator drugs. You've also got drugs which prevent the, in, well, or they, they inhibit the reabsorption of water, H2O, and salt from renal tubular fluid. Okay, so these are drugs which will help to uh, reduce blood volume and therefore blood pressure. But of course the most important aspect is, in terms of the drugs, obviously this is when you've got a person who's got clinically significant hypertension, it's causing uh, uh, symptoms, it's likely to be in um, a range where you're going to get damage to the blood vessels of the brain and to the systemic circulation. But if you get, or if you are able to detect primary hypertension early on, then the first line of defense is lifestyle advice. And that's really 
increasing your amount of physical activity levels, so increasing the amount of aerobic endurance exercise, uh, and having a sensible diet where you're reducing the amount of calories that you're eating, and certainly not having calories from uh, foods that have a high amount of saturated fat, so biscuits, chocolates, cakes, all of the things that I actually like. Um, but so yeah, but physical activity is is one of the most important ways in which you can actually um, manage hypertension, um, and of course long-term maintenance is also dependent on keeping to uh, a regimen that includes good exercise, good physical activity levels, high physical activity levels, uh, and dietary restriction as well. Thank you very much for your time. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.